it does mean divide, right? Yeah. Fraction means divide. Just like we did over here, right? We actually created fractions. We created fractions right here. Negative 40 over negative 5, that just means divided by. So this means the same thing. So tell me something. If we used addition to get rid of subtraction, and subtraction to get rid of addition, and division to get rid of multiplication, what are we going to do to get rid of this division? Multiply. That's all we got to know, is that multiplication is going to undo our division for us, just like division undid our multiplication. What do we need to multiply by, though? Is it negative 3 or is it 5? What do you think? 5. What is the 5? Look where your variable's at. Our variable's on the left-hand side. We're trying to get rid of everything around that variable. If we're dividing by 5, the way we get rid of dividing by 5 is, let's multiply by 5. Let me show you something real quick. <clears throat> Again, I'll show you why this works. If you'd like to see, do you want to see why it works? Okay. If you don't care, we'll just kind of zone up for a while. You should care, though. It's kind of cool. Here's why this works. If you really think about this as a fraction, I hope that you know that 5 is the same thing as 5 over 1. Did you know that? How you multiply fractions, that, I'm going ahead of the game here, but I'm going to show this to you now because I think it's important. Um, how you multiply fractions is we simply multiply the tops and the bottoms, or in other words, our numerators and our denominators. So here's what you could do. You could say this is the same thing as 5 times x over 1 times 5. That's the only part you're going to have to believe me on. Do you believe me on that? That's true? Yeah. Next up, what we do, since multiplication is commutative, it means I can switch these around, which means I could have 5 times x over 5 times 1. Do you believe that? Yeah. And then we're in the same situation that we just had. This is 5 over 5 times x over 1. 5 over 5 is 1 times x or x. So in this way, you can prove that multiplication actually undoes division for you. It's the same basic idea after you get down to this part. Did you follow that? Yes. Good. So it does work out for us. Basically, if you got division, just multiply both sides by that same number. So if we multiply by 5 and we multiply by 5, what's going to happen is we know these 5s are going to be gone. We just, like, just proved it. Like it's like fraction, and we'll talk about simplification later on. I haven't shown you that. Uh, for right now, what you need, need to know is that multiplication undoes the division portion of this problem. Are you cross canceling? We're simplifying, yeah. But again, I, haven't, I can't talk about simplifying yet because I haven't even covered fractions. Um, so I, I kind of went ahead of the game here and, and to show you this. But essentially, yes, that's what you're doing. You're, you're going to simplify those numbers. So our 5 divided by 5, that still gives us 1. On the right-hand side, what are we going to be left with? Negative 15. Sure, we know how to multiply some numbers together. And that's our answer. Let's try another one together, then I'll give you two more on your own, and we'll talk about chapter 3. y over negative 2 equals 8. Hey, what are we trying to get rid of in this example? Now, negative 2, how are we going to get rid of negative 2? Multiply. Why are we going to multiply? Plus negative 2. What now? Well, why are we going to multiply? I know we're going to multiply by something. Why are we doing that? Yeah, that's right. We have division right now. We want to multiply because that's the opposite of division. That's the inverse. That's what's going to undo that. The question is, what do we need to multiply by? Should I multiply by 8, negative 8, 2, or negative 2? What do you think? Negative 2. Okay. Why not positive 2? Uh, this is the same situation as if you didn't divide by the negative right here. If you divided by positive 7, you still have negative y. You remember talking about that like a couple minutes ago? Same thing would happen here. If you don't multiply by negative 2, your negative will not go away. And you, you can't just magically make it go away. So if we multiply by negative 2 on the left-hand side, of course we do kind of mean negative 2 over 1. Those 2's are going to simplify to make a 1. Negative 2 over negative 2 gives us that positive 1 that leaves us with our y. 
But on the right hand side, what do I need to do as well? Divide. Divide? Multiply. Then we get to do the same thing on both sides. So if we multiply it over here, we're also going to have to multiply over here by the same number. What number was that? I'm putting that in parentheses to show that I'm multiplying, not subtracting. How much are we going to get? Guess what? These equations still work if you, try, if you plug the number back in. If you plug in negative 16, negative 16 divided by negative 2, sure enough, that is positive 8. Why don't you just, when you look at a problem like that, just go ahead and multiply uh, negative 2 times 8. And that gives you the answer, right? That's what we're doing. Yeah, instead of going through all the other stuff. Yeah, it's stuff is the stuff that you need to know. Yeah. It's the knowledge. We get into the lighter. Exactly. You guys together are like me. That's awesome. Yeah. Because yes, that that is what we're, what we're doing, Kevin. Right? That is what we're doing. We're we're multiplying here on both sides uh, to show that over on our left hand side, we're actually creating. I showed you on this example. We're creating a positive one. We're multiplying positive one times y. That's why this one step works. Uh, we what we do to the left hand side, we do to the right hand side. That's why we have the negative two here. So yeah, that that is what we're doing. Um, but I just need you to show it. That's all. I would like you to try three on your own right now. So this is going to wrap up our section. Let's make sure we get these ones right. If you're really kind of a little bit not getting this, let me know as I'm walking around. I will definitely help you out. Okay. So when we look at our problem, of course we have division problems up here. We have our variables being divided by a number. In order to get rid of that division, we of course have to use multiplication. All you need to realize is that we're multiplying by exactly the same number that our problem is divided by. So here, when we are divided by negative 4, to undo that divided by negative 4, we need to multiply by negative 4. Of course, we show that on both sides, and the reason why this works again is because positive 4 divided by negative 4, well, that creates positive 1. That I'm sorry, negative 4 divided by negative 4 creates a positive 1. That leaves us with our variable of z. On the right-hand side, I hope that you got negative 36. Did you get negative 36? Yeah. Awesome. Good. Why negative 36? Well, 9 times negative 4 is negative 36. We don't have to show that we cross cancel over time no more now that we know on. What now? We don't have to show like how to get the Z. You have to show how to get the Z. Why? Well, a better reason than because I said so is because uh, we're, you're going to be doing a lot more complex steps later on. Not only that, when you get to math C, you're going to have problems that look a lot like this.
you're going to get a lot of problems that look like that. That's chapter 7, that's actually a review from Math A. So in Math A class, towards the end of your semester, you're going to be doing things like this. Okay, this is solving rational equations. If you don't know how to do this and show your work on this, you will not be able to do this, I promise you. I promise. Um, so I have to be able to get you to do these steps before I can let you do things like this. Do you understand now? Okay. The way you do this is kind of fun, but it involves, it involves some, a lot of the processes you learn in this class to do this stuff. No, don't stress out. No, when you get there, you'll, you'll know it. Right? Trust me, you'll, you'll know it when you get there. Uh, but for right now, this is the reason why I have you show your steps. Because right now it's like, oh yeah, this is very easy to do in your head. This might be very easy for you to do in your head. So of course. This is the very first chapter of Math C. Oh. So how far are we from, away from that? Well, Next class is, well, you have to complete this class. Then you have Math A, which builds you up towards some of this stuff. Towards the end of the semester of Math A, you'll be dealing with a little bit more like this. And then Math C starts here. And then we run through a whole bunch of good stuff. Yeah. And then you go into math two, and then you go into calculus. And then calculus two, calculus three, differential equations, linear algebra, uh, math 15, math 10, then however far you want. Then the sky's the limit. Isn't that awesome? Is that calculus awesome? is actually pretty good, though. I like calculus. After the 5x, is that plus 5 or is that plus 6? Don't write this down. It's fine. But we're not doing this right now. <laughs> you can, you can, but that's a minus six. Minus six? Yeah. Yep. That would work out. Okay. Anyway, that's a very long way to give an answer of show your steps. Anyway. So moving on, we do have the x over negative 3. Of course, we're going to be multiplying by whatever we've divided by. Multiply both sides by negative 3. In this case, we have x and we have positive 21. Did you get positive 21? Yeah. Awesome. And last one, of course, we need to multiply by 5. That means on both sides, we get y and we get negative 60. How many people feel pretty good about multiplication and division? Good. Solving equations in general, you feel okay with that? Awesome. Before we can go any further in solving equations, we've got to talk about some chapter 3 stuff. You see, these are, these are very basic equations for us. They're only one-steppers. Um, in the future, we're going to have several steps involved in solving these equations. But before we can do that, we have to talk about how to simplify some expressions. 